Hi, I'm Terry. I'm Margaret. And you're viewing Miracles on the Street live. It's about you and your miracle. And right now, Margaret has an important announcement to make. Okay, uh, Theory Gift Baskets is proud to present the Art Project on May 7, 2011 at Mariloma Christian Church, located at 9282 Mission Boulevard, Riverside, California, 92509, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Selling original art to raise money for the Riverside Rape Crisis Center. Please come purchase great works of art from local artists. It is to support a wonderful cause. The event will be cash and carry. Artists include Kaylee Swinney, Shahara Gunasekara, Josh Young, Chris Fontana, John Paul Real, Alex Connell, Nancy Avila, and Vincent Landreth. DJ Lawrence Parra will be spinning house music. There will also be a dollar raffle ticket sold to win some great prizes. Every dollar made will be given to help fund the Riverside Rape Crisis Center. Donations will also be accepted that night. Viewing is from 6 to 6.30 p.m. and then the sale begins. Thank you. That's an awesome introduction there. That, that's really great. We're proud to be a part with Theory Gift Baskets to do this. And so for every viewer watching, please uh, let a friend know. And when you watch this program, if you have a miracle that you've written down or you know of someone that's had a miracle, please get in touch with us so we can air the miracle. Again, the program is about what's your miracle. And the way that we keep this going is I, I did a book, and they're going to zoom in on the book. And the, like that, okay. And as they zoom in on the book, this book helps us stay on the air as Theory Gift Baskets again is is uh supporting us so we want to thank all viewers tonight this is terry young <clears throat> i'm with miracles on the street and this program is about what's your miracle i am here with uh dorothy ray from dorothy ray international ministries and she's had a miracle testimony that she's going to share with us today so dorothy could you share your miracle with the viewers today Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, about 30 years ago, uh, my husband uh, was alive, and he, but he was ill. And the Holy Spirit told me one day, I want you to read all of the red words in the New Testament to your husband. I had no idea what that was all about. I didn't ask any questions. I just spent a night reading to him. He was asleep, but he was hearing it. The Spirit was hearing it. And so I really never thought any more about it, didn't know what it was about, didn't ask any questions. But about three weeks or so ago, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, I was reading a, in John G. Lake book about the uh, Jesus and the disciples. And he was talking to them and he said about communion that they were to eat his body and to, to drink his blood. And if they did that, it, the, the New Testament was in his blood and that they would, would, uh, it would it'd do something for them. You know, it, it was more than just uh, uh, taking a little glass of wine and a piece of bread. And so I began to meditate on this. The, the New Testament in my blood and then I remembered that the Holy Spirit had had me read that to my husband before he died and and I, I, I just started meditating about it and reading what he said about communion that if we take his his body and his blood we will live and 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 be have eternal life in other words we wouldn't die and, and I'm, I'm meditating on this and thinking about all the times that I've taken communion, never really heard anything like this. So I just said, well, God, i really like to have uh, a, that all printed out so I can read it. 
and uh, I just was was in meditating on it, and a friend of mine from Canada called me that morning, and I was telling her what I was thinking about when she called me, and I said, well, you're good on the computer. I said, you think we could go on and find a, a, some something on the internet that where, where we could uh, uh, get this book, get this to be like a book where you could read it uh, and separate from the Bible. And I, I began to think, you know what? Jesus, that's the only words that Jesus has ever been recorded of anything that he said when he was on earth. It was all in, in that and that red words, they were the red letter words, they called it in the, in the King James Version. And she said, I think I've got a CD, and i got time today, and, and if I find it, I, you'll have it by tonight. And I, you know, all these pages, print it out. I can read. And so by the end of the day, she had emailed me, all of these scriptures, and I have them in a book, and I and the Lord told me to read them every day, and I keep getting in, uh, enlightenment. He said in John six sixty three, the spirit is uh, quickeneth, and the flesh prospereth nothing, but the word. Jesus said, but the words that I speak, their spirit and their life. Well, you see, when I speak words, they're not spirit and life unless they come from the Holy Spirit. But His words, so these words are spirit and life. And He says, and He healed everyone. He healed everyone He prayed for. And I said, and so I called Terry. And I said, Terry, this is a miracle. I've got a whole, uh, I've got 100 pages, or 99 pages, or 100 pages of these scriptures that He spoke to the disciples and and I'm reading them every day and I'm learning new things about communion I'm learning new things about what Jesus said I'm having a different understanding and it's miraculous when you really get into it and so Terry said well he wanted me to share this because a lot of people they just think they they don't have any feel for communion they don't really realize that they're eating his flesh and drinking his blood but he says if you do it unworthily you'll die but if you do it right, you'll live. So I said, you know what? The New Testament's in my blood because he's in me, in my blood. So I just wanted to give this testimony. Uh, you know, it, it's a life changer. And, and I just thank God for bringing it back to me after all these years. I never really had thought of it one time until the Holy Spirit brought it to me. That's a great testimonial. I, you can't see me because I'm behind the camera taping this uh, with Dorothy Ray. But she just told you that her miracle was not a miracle of money but it was, or, or a miracle of healing, but it was a miracle that somebody, that it started over 30 years ago, and she was prompted in her spirit to read the, the words that Jesus spoke. And just a couple days, or three weeks ago, as she said, she didn't have access to the scriptures. But how amazing that that miracle manifested itself to a friend in Canada that says, I have those scriptures in red that I would be willing to send you. Now, for Dorothy, that was amazing because computers are not her thing. But thank God that God put someone in her path that says, I've got it for you. And that was a miracle for her. And she got so excited about it that she, she had to tell you today that this is a phenomenal miracle. So again, Miracles on the Street is about you, and it's about what's your miracle. So we'd like to thank Dorothy for taking time today to share her miracle with us at Miracles on the Street. Thank you. This is Terry with uh, Miracles on the Street, and we're actually doing a live interview with Shelly Smith. And um, she's going to tell you of, of a miracle that took place in her life, and she's excited about it. And, of course, this program is about what's your miracle. So now we're going to hear from Shelly. Shelly, go ahead, please. I just want to share with you what has happened in my husband and my life. Um, we have been really blessed um, to have a spiritual son. God has put him in our lives. 
and he is just fabulous. Um, we saw him grow up in the church that we were at, and um, he just grew and grew and grew as he got closer and closer to the Lord. And he would always come to our house and, and ask for advice about women and, and about work and, and about integrity and work, and, and my husband would guide him through all those things over the years. Um, and um, it's just a blessing to know where he is at this time in his life. He um, was, he's 28 years old, and he started to go to a church um, in um, Riverside, the Good News Church. And he had invited us there, and we went a couple of times just to be with him and see him and, and see what was going on over there. And um, he just started going over there, and he met um, a young lady over there whose name was Renee, and she is the pastor's daughter. And um, he was going over there, and they went out a couple of times as friends and didn't even think anything of it. And the Lord went up to him and said to him, Do you trust me? And he said, Well, yes, Lord, I trust you. And he said, Then trust me. And he told him, That's the girl you're going to marry. And he was like, Oh, okay. So anyway, um, as he sat next to her in church, he decided to hold her hand in church. And then the Lord told her also, this is the man you're going to marry. Now, mind you, he's 28 years old and she's 24 years old. Neither one of them have been with another person. They're pure in all, all manner of speaking. And it's such a blessing woo, to see how two people who waited on God, excuse me, who waited on God, and he brought them together, and the purity of the relationship and the covenant they're going to make is, is just wonderful. Anyway, we, I, that, to me, in these, this day and age, that's a miracle. It's a true miracle that those two kids would wait and listen and keep themselves pure before God and now they're both going to be married this Saturday and they're both going into full-time ministry that's what they want to do and it's just it's like a happily ever after Cinderella story so I just thank you Lord for that miracle it was awesome do you want to share your other one I have another miracle also um, my sister I have an older sister who's uh, 10 years older than me, and she had been going through um, quite a bit of pain in her abdominal area. And she um, doesn't have any, in she did not have any insurance, so she didn't go, and she just kept praying and asking God to heal her and, and trying to get through this. And pretty soon she was really having quite a bit of pain, and it was going and getting worse and worse and worse. And, and she was finally able to get in on assistance which was a total miracle that she got on assistance because she makes too much money and they would not help her, the county would not help her because she makes too much money. But she was rushed to the hospital about four or five times because she was in so much pain. So finally she had to quit work. And so she was able to go in and get an interview and they interviewed her and um, uh, they, she shared that how they said they thought she had a cyst on her um, on her ovary, and um, uh, but it was just causing so much pain that it didn't seem right. But anyway, they interviewed her, and um, they really didn't want her on the system. But it was through a miracle. This lady was a, a Christian lady, you could tell, because she went ahead and she said, "You know, I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to see what I can do for you." And um, so she went out in the back, and she figured something out and came back, and she said, I'm going to put you on the system, and you can be on it for six months, and we'll put you on a system that will um, help you and pay for the things that need, you need done and having surgery and whatever you need done. And all you have to do is pay about $300 a month. So that was fantastic. And so anyway... Um, she went in to have her surgery, and um, the doctor um, was just going to go ahead and do a hysterectomy on her. Well, he went in, and all of a sudden, he found this growth, and this growth had wrapped around, it had tentacles all over, and it had wrapped around her kidney, 
her colon. It had wrapped around, it was in her pelvic area, and it had wrapped around an ovary, and um, also um, down her leg, one of her veins, her main artery in her veins. And so he went in and he just did a partial uh, hysterectomy and came out and said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have no idea how I'm going to handle this. And so he, he, he put it off for a week and she was able, thank you Lord, for favor, they put her in the hospital. And um, so she was in the hospital while she was waiting for her surgery and um, the doctor came in and, and he told her, he says, you may not make it through this just because <clears throat> it is wrapped, it, it is hooked itself to your pelvic and it has so many tentacles that if we pull this thing out, you may bleed to death because that's what will happen with your pelvic. And so he says, if I, and I may not be able to stop the bleeding. Now, mind you, this is a surgeon from Loma Linda. They did call in two professional surgeons from Loma Linda to do this. And um, so she had the best. This man, he knows, he's seen brains out on the floor and the whole nine yards. And he, 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 he can fix it, whatever it is. And that's how he said it to us. And he said, I don't know if I can do this. And, he, and I said, well, we're praying for you. You'll be fine. You'll figure it out. And he goes, okay. But he was really scared. So anyway, went in four hours later. He came back out and said, it just slipped right on out. And he said, it was awesome. It just slipped on out. There was no bleeding. He says, so now I'm going to go in. I'm going to take care of the kidney, the colon. Oh, that's a piece of cake, he said. <laughs> so we're like, okay. So anyway, it was another five hours. We were praying the whole time for her and praying for him and praying for everybody involved. And they ended up removing a kidney and they, they gave her a new um, uh, vein in her leg and um, fixed her colon and just everything came out smooth and just wonderful. And so it was a true miracle that she was able to first get on the system and them helping her because that usually doesn't happen. So she had favor with God. And God gave her favor to get on the system so she could have all this paid for because it was over $100,000. So God just came through for her. And she's doing well. She's, she's recovered. She can do her yard work. She did lose a kidney. But other than that, she's in perfect shape and praising God and loving the Lord. And I just thank him for saving my sister's life and doing that great miracle. Because even the doctor said, this is my miracle girl. So thank you, Lord. Well, you've heard it again that this program is called Miracles on the Street. And again, it's about what's your miracle. And miracles happen in a lot of different ways, not always in church. But here's Shelly talking about a miracle where God gave her sister, was it? Favor with the doctors. That's called favor with man. Here's a doctor who said, keep praying because I need that. I don't really know what to do. It's a life and death situation. But here is God, who is not a man that he would lie. Here is God performing a miracle using a doctor. So we just want to acknowledge and give God glory, because I know there's lots of people who have had miracles and who want to share their miracles. So again, Miracles on the Street presents to you these two miracles. We're excited about it. If you have a miracle that you want to share on this program, then please get hold of us at uh, uh, miraclesonthestreet.com or look at our email and send us an email. Or if you have a clip, then get hold of us and we'd like to share that so that people can see that miracles really do happen today. Thank you.